Hello, people. Very happy morning to all of you. So, guys, we are doing this chapter on average due date, and so far we have completed discussing case one and case two. So, case one was a scenario, guys, where you know it involved a unilateral transaction. It means that only one party was involved in making the payment, whereas case two was a transaction where two parties among themselves or between themselves they will buy and sell the goods. Therefore, both will make payment to each other. So two parties are involved for making the payment. So in case one, guys, what did we understand? We understood that you have to agree a unique date called as average due date upon which upon which all the multiple payment is comprised together and made as a lump sum payment in one shot, which will result neither as a gain or loss to the either parties. Right. So for that, we had created a structure of table which starts with date of transaction or date of bill, date of transaction or date of bill. Date of transaction is a scenario where there is no bill of exchange. Right. Normal credit period has been granted. Date of a bill means it is having a bill of exchange. So with this, you will take into consideration the term period. The term period can be in months or days. Now, if it is the date of transaction given in the question, with the date of transaction, you will add the term period, but you will not add three grace days. But if it is date of bill, then you will add the term period plus three grace days. So when you look at the question, you have to be very clear and sorted whether it is any transaction. Or whether it is a bill of exchange document. So, with the date of transaction or date of bill, if I add the term period and the grace period, what will I get? Due date. Sometimes the question will give you the information directly, or the sometimes the question will give you the information like this. You have to calculate the due date. Okay. Next. Next column is amount column. Amount will be in rupees. Then. Number of days, number of days from base date, and then you get product. Now, how will you take base date in the due date column? In the due date column, you will identify a date which is the earliest date or the least date. That will become your base date. So, from base date to the due date, you have to calculate the number of Days. So amount into number of days will give you the product. So total of the product, and this is total of amount. So what is the average due date formula? Base date plus total product divided by total amount. Now this you will get in fraction. So fraction will be round off. Fraction will be round off, and then you'll get the average due date. Now the question will tell that this particular gentleman is making the lump sum payment not on the average due date. But earlier to this, if the payment is made earlier, then the person who is making early payment to prompt him to make early payment or to reward him for the early payment, we have to give him a discount or a rebate. Rebate needs to be allowed, a discount needs to be allowed, or interest needs to be allowed. So early payment will have the impact of reducing the overall payment or increasing the overall payment. It will reduce overall payment. If you have to make the overall payment, let's suppose the total amount that I have to pay is twenty thousand. So I'll calculate the rebate. And from the total amount, the rebate allowed or discount allowed or interest allowed is subtracted, and then the balance amount is paid. If you make the payment after the due date, so you are making a delayed payment. In event of delayed payment, you are supposed to calculate the interest, and you have to collect the interest in addition to the amount of the bill. So in that case, for early payment, this is the one. For delayed payment, it is total amount plus rebate received. Or discount received or interest received. For delayed payment, you have to collect the interest, so amount will go up. For <coughs> early payment, the amount will go down because you are giving a discount. It is as good as a cash discount. <coughs> so this was your case one. In case two, what will happen, guys? In case two, what will happen? In case two, you will calculate. In case two, is a scenario where two persons are making payment to each other. So you will create. Two tables. So table A will be where X is making payment to Y. 
in that same thing date of transaction or date of bill term period due date amount in rupees number of days from base date and product so you do the tabular column you will do this 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 and wait then you will go to the second table where the payment is made by y to x in that also you will do this 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 and wait why because you have to compare both the table now for you to calculate the number of days from the base date you need to fix a base date now here you will not take two different base date you will combine both the table and see in the due date column you will check this as well as this and see if there is any least due date so that will be taken as a base for calculating number of days and this number of days which means for both the tables the base date is going to be common in the bilateral transaction in the bilateral transaction the base date is going to be common for both the table then you will calculate the number of days and the product now what will be the formula being given here it will be not the total product it will be the difference of product divided by difference of amount rest all concept remains the same am i clear guys online people Please, yes, sir. Am I clear yes, what I am saying? I have just done a recap of what we discussed so far. Next is guys, case three. Learn calculation of average due date when amount is repaid in installment. This is a question, guys. Now, this particular concept, if you see previous to previous book. You know, there is only one question based on this particular concept, and we did in a particular method which the book has taught. Then later the book had amended, and in addition to this, another question was been added, and that question was done in the method what we have done so far. So if you see this question, they have done slightly in a unique way, right? So what is this case? Guys, this is a case where you have to calculate the average due date where the amount is to be repaid in installments, which means. Loan you have taken, and you have to pay the loan in multiple installments. Now, instead of paying in multiple installment, you are supposed to come to a date on which you will make the entire payment of the loan plus whatever the interest is agreed for. This that interest also should not be compensated or compromised. Let you understand this when I do this question. Now, guys, rupees ten thousand lent by Das Bros to Kumar and Sons. On first Jan two thousand fifteen, so the lending is happening on first Jan two thousand fifteen, which is repayable in five equal annual instalment commencing from first Jan two thousand sixteen. So this ten thousand is supposed to supposed to be repaid in five equal annual instalment. So ten thousand divided by five means two thousand you have to pay. The repayment begins from first Jan, commencing from first Jan two thousand sixteen. Find the average due date. And calculate the interest at five percent per annum, which Das Bros will record from Kumar and Sons. Forget this part. Normally, if this question is given, guys, how do we solve this? How do we solve this question? Normally, if it is given, this is the time period, and this is date of lending, one one two thousand fifteen. Okay, and repayment. This is five equal annual instalment. It's not monthly instalment, nor quarterly, nor half yearly. It is annual instalment. Means what? You'll pay the amount once in a year. So ten thousand rupees is the total loan amount. You have to divide in five parts. So two thousand rupees you'll pay each year. Correct. So one five is the date of giving loan, where I had ten thousand rupees on my hand, and the repayment is happening on date of repayment or first date of repayment of loan. First date of repayment of loan happens on one one sixteen. So throughout this period, guys, that is from one one two thousand fifteen to one one sixteen. This amount has been enjoyed by Kumar and Sons for a period of twelve months, and the interest that you are supposed to pay is five percent per annum. So if I have to calculate interest, interest is equal to ten thousand. Into five by hundred, which is five hundred, correct? So in this entire period, Kumar and Son enjoyed ten thousand rupees. 
and then on 1 1 2016 you're supposed to pay 2000 rupees so next is 1 1 17 so from 1 1 2016 to 1 1 17 can i say kumar and son have enjoyed 8000 rupees because from 10000 they have repaid 2000 in the beginning of the year so the rest of 16 this 1116 to 1117, they are going to enjoy 8000 rupees. So, on that proportionate interest, I have to calculate, which is nothing but 8000 into 5 by 100, which is 400, which is 400. Then, what is happening? This is the second date of repayment of loan where 2000 rupees is paid. So, from 8000, if 2000 is paid, balance is how much? 6000, which is enjoyed. From 1117 to 1118, this period, 6000 is enjoyed. So for this period, the interest will be 6000 into 5 by 100, which is going to be 300. Then third date of repayment of loan is again 2000 rupees. So from 6000, if I minus 2000, balance is 4000 rupees enjoyed in this period. Balance of 4,000 rupees is enjoyed in this period. So what is the interest for this period? 4,000 into 5 by 100, which is 200. Then fourth date of repayment of loan, which is again 2,000 gone. Because on 1, 1, 19, we are making the repayment, fourth installment. So here, 2,000 rupees. Gone. So what is the balance from 4,000 if 2,000 is repaid balance is 2,000. So what is the interest here 2,000 into 5 by 100 which is 100. So fifth date of repayment of loan 2,000 rupees is the amount in that 2,000 is paid which is on 1, 120. So what is the balance here? Zero. Balance is zero here. Any problem here? If I, if I give you this question and ask you to calculate as a layman, this is how they will calculate. Yes or no? All in people tell me guys. Yes or no? Yes, sir. The total interest is 1,500. So here guys, can you see there are multiple payment involved? 2,000 rupees is split in five different installment. So five different times you have to pay. So now Kumar and Sun is telling that this is a headache for me, Arjun. This is a headache for me. This is a headache for me. I don't want I don't want to make this payment to be done in five installment. Instead, I should make the payment in one lump sum, one shot. To which Das Bros is also accepting. But Das Bros says the condition. But the interest should not be compromised because I have given a loan to you. You have enjoyed the money. And you have contracted with me that you will pay me interest of 1,500. Correct? So you make the lump sum payment. I have no problem, but it should be happening in such a way that I don't lose this interest. I should not be compromising this interest. See in the previous question, up till previous question, what happened? We agreed on a date on which if the payment is happening, interest is neither gained or lost. But here, if you see the beginning of the contract it is itself, when the loan was given, this was agreed boss. In the previous cases, the transaction was for buying and selling the goods which never involved any interest from the beginning at all. Interest came into picture only when the either payment is made early or delayed. But here, this interest is for enjoying the money. Kumar and sir is enjoying the money for which the consideration has to be interest now. So you have to agree on an average due date where you make the lump sum payment of full 10,000 in one shot. I have to make 10,000 payment in one shot on a date where you calculate interest up to that date, the interest has to be 1,500 only. So we'll do an average due date now. So same column. Here, due date I'll take directly because all the dates, guys, that is 1, 1, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 are all the due date for the payment of installment. So due date I'll take directly. Heading will be calculation of average due date. So I'll take due date. Then next is what guys amount in rupees, the number of days. Now here guys, if we take number of days from the base date, the base date will be one date. Okay. From base date, if you calculate, see it is yearly transaction. 
So here, what is your base date going to be? Of all this date, what is the least date? One one fifteen. So from one one five, one one fifteen, if you calculate every due date, it will be three sixty five days first year. Then multiply. So number of days will go high. So instead of that, can we do something else? Can we do number of days from the number of months from the base date? Number of years also you can do. One one fifteen is the earliest date. This is the base date where the transaction. This is one one two thousand sixteen due date. One one two thousand fifteen will be the base date. That is the starting point. This is an exceptional question. So here I'll not take the due date. Here I'll take the transaction date. The one one two thousand fifteen onwards. So I'll take number of months. You can take number of years also. We'll do both. Number of months from base date, and then I'll get product. So due date, due date basically, guys, one month two thousand fifteen is the transaction date that you have to take here that you cannot ignore because it is a case of loan. So why we are taking one month fifteen? Because from one month fifteen to one month sixteen, we have to take into consideration the interest factor. That is why we are taking this as a base date. Or even if you take one month sixteen also, so even as you said also, Siddhi, if, if I take one month sixteen also here, but base date has to be one month fifteen because that is the starting point. Why we have to take the loan date as a starting point because from one month fifteen to one month sixteen, I need to calculate my interest period now. So that question is different. In those questions, the transaction starting point did not involve any interest element, but here the interest element is involved. So I have to go from the base date. Base date will be the loan given date. So first due date is one month two thousand sixteen. Amount of repayment is two thousand. The next due date is one month two thousand seventeen. One month two thousand eighteen. One month two thousand nineteen and one month two thousand twenty. We are making the installment five installment payment, so which is two thousand each. Which is two thousand each. So number of months from the base date. Number of months from the base date. The base date. What are we going to take here is one one fifteen. This is the base date. So number of days from base date, number of months, not days, number of months from base date to the due date is. Can I say twelve months here? Then number of months from base date one one fifteen to due date one one seventeen is twenty four month. Then thirty six month. Then forty eight month. Then sixty month. Because twelve twelve gap. So twelve ones are twelve. Twelve two is a twenty four. Twelve three is a thirty six. Twelve four is a forty eight. Twelve five is a sixty. Product is the multiplication. So please take your calculator. Two thousand into twelve m plus twenty four thousand. Two thousand into twenty four m plus forty eight thousand. Two thousand into thirty six m plus seventy two thousand. Two thousand into forty eight m plus. Ninety-six thousand, two thousand into sixty, m plus one lakh twenty thousand, MRC, three lakh sixty thousand. And what is the total amount? Do there any doubts? Now, average due date is equal to base date plus total product divided by total amount. What is the base date? One one fifteen plus three lakh sixty thousand divided by ten thousand. So one one fifteen plus three lakh sixty divided by ten thousand. If I do what will I get? Thirty six months I'll get. Thirty six month means how many years? Thirty six month means three years. So from one one two thousand fifteen, add three years. You'll get one one eighteen. Online people are able to follow. 
average so, it is one one eighteen, which means on this date you are supposed to make the payment of full ten thousand. But when you do that, you have to ensure that Das Bros is getting interest not less than one thousand five hundred because this is already agreed. So let's see what happens here. Let's check what is the interest, whether it is matching or not matching. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, fifteen, one, one, sixteen, one, one, seventeen, one, one, eighteen, one, one, nineteen, one, one, twenty. Correct. Now here, guys. Are you making any payment here in 2016? Are you making the 2000 payment? No. Are you making the payment here? No. Because what are we agreeing? We are saying that we don't want multiple payment. We want a single payment, full lump sum payment of 10,000 rupees. This amount I have to pay in one shot. On which date? On 1 May 2018. On 1 May 2018, I have to make the full payment of 10,000 rupees. Which means, can I say from this period? To this period, to this period, Kumar and Sun have enjoyed ten thousand rupees into five by hundred. So this is interest for one year. Whatever answer you get, multiply with three, you will get the interest for the three years. Because simple reason, Kumar is making the payment here now. So technically, he is enjoying ten thousand here, ten thousand here, and ten thousand here. Had he made the repayment as per the schedule of installment. Then you would have made the two thousand payment here. Balance eight thousand is enjoyed here, six thousand, four thousand like that. But here he did not make any repayment. He is making the repayment only straight away on ten thousand. Sorry, ten thousand on one one eighteen, which means he is enjoying the ten thousand rupees for the full three years. So ten thousand into five by hundred will give me the interest for one year because five percent is per annum. Per annum means twelve months. So for three years, Kumar is enjoying this amount for three years. So what will be the interest? Same amount will come. So ten thousand into five by hundred is the interest for first year plus ten thousand into five by hundred is the interest for second year plus ten thousand into five by hundred is for third year. So you'll get five hundred plus five hundred plus five hundred, which is one thousand five hundred. This is the long way of doing. Short way is how much? Ten thousand into five by hundred. So five hundred is the interest per annum. Five hundred is interest per annum. Therefore, for three years, interest is. Five hundred into three, which is one thousand five hundred. You can do like this or this. So here, guys, you are making an arrangement to make the repayment of loan in lump sum in one shot on an average due date in such a way that the interest, what is agreed earlier, that interest is not compromised. So as agreed, one thousand five hundred interest Das Bros is receiving at the same time, the lump sum payment is happening, which is. Relieving us from remembering when I should receive, when I should give the payment. That hassle is being removed here. Tell me, guys, any problem in this question? You want to take base date as one one two thousand sixteen? If you take base date one one two thousand sixteen, I'm telling you, you take any base date. Answer will be sixteen. But again, what will happen is you have to travel backward one one two thousand fifteen now. You are telling that you will take base date two thousand sixteen. Then it will become zero months. Twelve. Twenty-four. Thirty-six and forty-eight. So you multiply. What will you get? Two thousand into you have to multiply, na? No? So two thousand into twelve. M plus is twenty-four thousand. Forty-eight thousand. Seventy-two thousand, ninety-six thousand. So this is because the same amount, the proportionate amount is reduced and proportionate uh, credit is also reduced. So twenty-four. So basically three lakh sixty thousand minus one twenty-five two. You will get two lakh forty. And this is total amount is how much? Ten thousand. So two lakh forty thousand divided by ten thousand. You get twenty-four months, na ma? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what uh, Samiksha suggested, sir, if you, even if you take one one two thousand sixteen as a base date, things will not go wrong because 
let's suppose this is the due date and this is the number of months so what happens is base date is 1116 base date to due date is 0 months then 1117 base date is 1116 so what base date 1116 to 1117 12 months so 1118 24 months 1119 36 months 1120 48 months right so when you multiply you will get 2 lakh 40000 as total product so 2 lakh 40000 upon 2 lakh 40000 upon 10000 you will get 24 months you will get 24 months now the base date is what 1116 so 1116 plus 24 month which is nothing but 2 years will be 1118 so even if you take 1116 as a base date you getting the same answer okay any problem here i did not teach you anything new guys it is normal question this is normal concept what we have done so far if you have any problems please let me know online people no problem sir but i have a problem but this question no no interest is all fine the interest will go for a toss let's do the interest also why interest calculation go for a toss the payment is happening on 1118 only no so this period full 10000 enjoyed full this period full 10000 enjoyed this period full 10000 interest also will be same no problem but the problem what i have is in the question that is in your icis study material this question has been done in a different way a unique method has been suggested so i'll teach you that also but this also is fine so here what are they telling is that the formula for average unit here is date of loan date of loan plus sum of sum means total of plus of either days months or years from the date of lending to the date of repayment of each installment divided by number of installment so my duty is to teach you this also so this is the due date guys 11 2015 the due date will be zero because that is the date of lending the loan so that cannot be the actual due date for payment so zero days on 11 2015 it is zero so number of years from the base date base date is 11 2015 So one one two thousand fifteen to one one two thousand fifteen zero years. One one two thousand fifteen to one Jan two thousand sixteen one year. Uh, what are we trying to calculate? We are trying to calculate number of years from the base date, like we do for the average due date. What they are telling is that, like that you calculate the number of years, like we calculate the number of days from base date, like we calculate number of months from the base date, like this number of years from the base date. What are they telling is that do the total of this formula is. sum of years sum of years which year i want that year which is coming from the date of lending to the date of repayment so this year 1 2 3 can i say this is the date of lending and this is the date of repayment so date of lending to date of repayment date of lending to date of repayment calculate the years and that years sum i want sum means total shall so break this into part total of years which year from date of lending i want first total of years total means addition of years which years from the date of lending to date of repayment so date of loan is 1115 repayment is happening in five different slots so 115 to 116 115 to 1617 115 to 117 115 to 118 like that calculate the number of years arjun then these years i need to do a sum total of this so total of this is how much total of this is how much 15 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 sum total divided by number of installments how many installments they said they'll repay five installments so divide by 5 so you'll get 15 by 5 which is 3 years so date of loan 1st jan 
plus three years, you land up the same weight. This is a different way of doing it. So initially, when this book was launched, this was the only question and this was the only method given. Then what happened later when the book was revised, they gave this another question. And in this another question, they did in the method what we have learned from the beginning. So now the question that comes in your mind is, sir, if this case, three kind of a question is given, should I do in method one that we have been doing so far? Or should we do as per the new method? I would say your choice as long as the first question is there. But in second question, I was shaken that if I did this question in both the methods, I was not getting the same answer. So I'll do the second question for you, which is illustration 10. And then we'll decide what to do, what not to do. So are you clear with the first question guys? As long as the first question is concerned, we did in both the ways. This illustration nine, we did in both the ways. What is the first way? The first way was the normal average due date method. The same formula we did. And second method we did in this way, where the formula is going for a change. It says that date of loan. Plus, I want the sum total of years. Which years? Those years which is coming from the date of lending to date of repayment. So number of days from base date. Base date here will be the loan date. So this is nothing but number of years from base date. So get the years. Do the total of that. That total years divided by divided by number of installment given in the question. You will get the number of years after which even if you make the payment, the interest is not compensated. The interest is not compromised. So that due date is 1180. Are you clear with this? So 1118 is that date on which if you make the payment, Das Bros will get 10,000 full lump sum payment as well as you'll get the original interest of 1500 as agreed, as agreed. Now, this is a different question that if uh, Kumar and Sun further delays and makes the payment on 1119, then for extra one year, he has to pay extra interest. Are you able to follow? So that is a different question. Now, this given set of a question can be solved in two ways. So in both the method, we got the same answer. We will go to a similar question. Next question. Illustration 10. It says that rupees 20,000 lent on 1st January 2015. Same date there also. 1st January 15 is repaid as follows. The only difference is there the amount is same. Here the amount is different. 2,500 on 1 Jan 2016. So this is the first date of repayment of loan. 5,500 is on 1 month 17, which is the second date of repayment. 3,000 third, 5,000 fourth, 4,000 fifth. So can I say amount is constantly changing here. In the previous question, the amount was constant. The amount of repayment was constant. So determine the average due date for settling all the above installment by single payment. So instead of making multiple payment, I want to make this full 20,000 as a single payment in such a way that whatever interest I'm earning for this period, whatever interest I'm earning for this period, that interest should not be compensated. Why? Because I am lending the money. So I have to get my income now. So that income should not be compromised. So here, what are they telling? Take the due date. So first Jan 2016 is the first due date of payment. This is second due date, third due date, fourth due date, fifth due date. Please note down the due date. Then amount as it is from the question. Number of months from the base date. Base date, I told you, you have to take the date of loan as base date. Even if you take any other base date also, you'll get the same answer. But for common purposes, we'll take always the date of loan as the base date. So from 1 1 2015 to 1-1-2016, it is 12 months. Like that, you'll get 24, 36, 48, 60. Exactly like previous question. Exactly like previous question. That's what we we'll, that is how she's inferring like this could how it be that we'll discuss at the end. We'll finish this and discuss. Please complete guys. Please complete till number of months. Until number of months, guys. 
then very simple amount into product will, uh, amount into number of months from the base date will give you the product so 2500 multiplied by 12 months you'll get 30000 5500 multiplied by 24 you'll get 132000 like that if you multiply you'll get the total product and you have the total amount Please complete the tabular column and give me a heads up. Then I'll go forward. Abhi, Jay, Bhumika, Kavi, Kavi, are able to follow mom? What's happening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kavi, Rishabh, Rupesh, Sanjay, are able to follow? If you're not able to follow, please stop me then and there and please ask me. Do not hesitate. I'm giving you complete freedom. If you are not clear, stop me then and there and ask. This is a short, short question coming from this chapter. Five marks question, 100% will come from this chapter. Total product is 7,50,000 rupees. Are you all getting it? Online people waiting for responses. Arjun got it. Yes. Now, average due date, what is the formula? Same sheet, sir. Base date divided by base date plus total product divided by total amount. So, base date is 1 Jan 2015. Total product is 7,50,000 upon 20,000. You will get 37.5 months. 37.5, we have to round off. So, 0.5 and above will be next number, which is 38 months. 38 months. So from 1st Jan 2015, you have to calculate 38 months forward. So you will land up on 1st March 2018. You will land up on 1st March Well, if you have got your average due date, have all of you got your average due date? So, guys, first March 2018 is the average due date. Any problem here? Which means that I need to calculate interest from 1115. So, this 1115 is the date of lending the loan. Okay. And the repayment, entire amount of 20,000, the repayment is happening in one shot on 1 3 2018. So, from 1 1 15 to 31 3 18, guys, for a period of 38 months, you need to calculate the interest. So, 20,000 into what is the percentage? 10 by 100. Into 10 by 100, you will get interest for 2000 rupees. 2000 is for 12 months. 2000 is for 12 months then what will be the interest for 38 months cross multiply 2000 is interest for 12 months 
6,333. Is it the same interest? Rounded off. Approximation, round off. They took 6,000. They took 37.5. So you can do 37.5. What answer will get? 2,000 into 37.5 divided by 12. That is 6,250. What they've done is they rounded off this 33 to the nearest 10 rupee. This is out of approximation. You don't have to worry. But they've calculated interest for 38 months. They've calculated the interest for 38 months. Three months Sorry? Three months Three point one seven. How did you get that? Ah. Yeah. So if you come uh, convert this months into years, you, you'll get, see approximation. You don't have to go that much in detail. So this is how the interest, which means guys, this interest will be equal to that interest. Had the payment happened, had the repayment happened even every year, even if you had repaid every year, same interest you have got it guys. If you want to get cross check. So in that way we are safe. So on. 1 March 2018, if you're making the full payment of 20,000 rupees, the person is lending the money and who is supposed to actually receive this interest, he is not compromised, he is not compensated, he is getting this money as agreed. This is the way, guys, what the second question they have done it. So, my problem is the same question I tried doing, the same question I tried solving in the previous question method. I used this formula and tried to solve it. So, what does this formula say? This formula says date of loan plus I want sum of years, sum of years starting from date of loan to date of repayment. So I want the sum of years, date of loan to date of repayment, one year, date of loan to date of repayment, second year. Date of loan to date of repayment, third year. Date of loan to date of repayment, fourth year. Date of loan to date of repayment, fifth year. So date of loan to date of re repayment, I got the years. How many years I got it? I want a sum of those years. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five is how much? Which is 15 divided by, divided by installments. How many installments here? If you look at the question. First installment, second installment, third, fourth, fifth. So divided by number of installment. This is the formula. So 15 divided by 5. And this is date of loan. What is date of loan? 1, 1, 15. Plus 15 by 5 means I'll get 3 years. 3 years means 1, 1, 18 is the average due date. But when we did the method using the like normal method, we got 1318. So there's a lag of two months. There is a lag of two months. If you see the difference with the method, what I have done as per what you've done so far, all the questions, if I see as per that method, we're getting first March 18 as the average due date. But if I compare this with the method, what has been freshly taught in the previous question, if I use that, I'm getting 1, 1, 18. So this is the average due date. So the problem is coming in the new method. So what I feel is that if this question comes in exam, it is better to go with our method. Because as per the previous question, our method worked. As per the second question also, our method worked because that is how they have given the question. So in both the cases, what was the common benefit for us? Whatever method we have learned so far, if I applied that method, I got both the answers as per the book. But if I apply the new method in the second question, I'm not getting the answer. Now, what could be the reason behind this? I don't know. Maybe because in the first question, the amount of installment is same. Here, the amount of installment is different. Is that the reason? I don't know. The formula is called the uh, interest of payment. If you look at the question and compare it, guys, the problem here is there is uniform payment. But nowhere the concept is clear this, whether this formula is apply, applicable for the uniform payment. If that is the assumption, then for uniform payment, you can use this method. 
but my point is whether the amount is uniform or different our old method is win 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 both the question now so i'll do as per that method and why to unnecessarily put a new concept in mind to remember that formula and to take a risk so i would suggest in both of these questions do the method what we have learned so far from the beginning am i clear or not clear please tell me tell me guys am i clear or not clear with what i'm doing hello any doubts here please abhi bhumika kavi kavya rishab rupesh sanjay any problem here no sir no sir no, no sir. sir no sir so with that we have completed case 3 guys we have done the case 3 case 4 we'll do it it's 1 o'clock i'll take at least 20 minutes to do it so 3 o'clock you have your law class no you'll be able to manage or should i do this in the next class because anyways next class i have two more question left so that question and this question if i combine i can finish off monday in two and a half hours should we do it today or monday that is tomorrow it's 110 i'm just worried it's 110 because you have to again travel back home have your lunch and sit for your law class he has to travel arjun has to travel long because i'll take this at least you know 20 25 minutes to do this question easy easy question nothing to worry about but it's just a time consuming process because of the calculation that's it we'll do tomorrow don't worry we'll just put a end to the session here So case four we'll do it tomorrow. Along with that, maybe one or two more questions I'll do it, which are slightly unique and different. With that, we'll wrap up the average due date. Online people, are you clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So guys, repeatedly practice the questions. I'm telling you, you will not have time because till the nick of the moment, guys, our classes will go on because already we are two months delayed. So don't think that later stage you'll get time to revise. Revision is the time now. If you do it now, you'll be able to remember it better. so three time revision guys the revision technique what i have taught you please stick on to that revision technique i'm telling you at the later stage if you even don't get time to revise this revision technique what is what you are following now will be very fruitful for the future so kindly follow the technique right from now please do the adequate revision right from now and all the student those who are absent in between please utilize today's time to complete your recorded class am i clear with that yes Hello guys. So that's all for today's session, guys. I'll see you all in the tomorrow session from eleven thirty to one thirty. Until then, bye bye. See you. Take care.